Thank you very much. Well, if you're visiting with us today by virtue of the internet or here in person, we always start with the children's time, and JJ is always up to something, so I don't know what's going on today. Let's come down here and see if we can figure it out. JJ, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? By the way, somebody recently commented on how great my ventriloquism skills <laughs> have increased since uh, COVID. You know, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, JJ, um, what's going on? Well, you're talking about caring for the earth today and caring for creation, and so I did some cleaning up. Wow, look, he got this whole bag uh, he cleaned by himself. That's amazing. JJ, where did you get that? Uh, I got it from behind the pulpit. What? Yeah, you're really messy back there. Oh, wow. I don't know if you've ever been behind the pulpit. It's kind of a, no one ever sees it back there, so it collects stuff like crazy. It's, you wouldn't believe all the stuff that's back there. So thank you, JJ. Um, I can't believe it was that dirty. Yeah, here, let's go up there and look at it. Okay. Well, here, we're going to go up here and check it out. Oh, my. Yeah, look at all this. You just keep, you keep throwing this stuff up here. You got stuff everywhere. You need to clean up every once in a while. <laughs> hey, kids, can you help me put that in the bag? Thank you, thank you. Hey, all right. <laughs> clean up. <laughs> oh, 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 over here in the bag. <laughs> ah, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Oh, thank you. You know, you can do this in your room, too. You, you want to you try that? Uh, it's really a lot of fun. You just clean up your room. Anyway, all right, so, uh, yeah, we're talking about cleaning up today, taking care of the earth. And so you can do this, too. Look, I got this whole bag. Wow, look at that. Just from behind there. You gotta do a better job of cleaning up. Ooh. All right, I'll try. Um, gosh, thank you, JJ, for cleaning up after me. You know, uh, you can do that same thing everywhere, can't you? Yeah, when you're outside, you can pick up stuff. When you're around your yard, you can pick up stuff. When you're in your room, you can pick up stuff. And that helps to take care of creation, or take care of the earth, so let's do that, okay? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay, let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us the earth and for all the things we have and to so help us to take care of them, to clean up, and to take care of this earth that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, JJ, you want to go downstairs today? Yeah, yeah. All right. I'll try to do better with my cleaning up, my goodness. You wouldn't believe what all is back here. I've got, uh, I've got a spider, a mechanical spider, I've got all, all kinds of stuff. So. Okay, well, welcome everyone to our worship service today. Pleased to have you with us, whether online or in person. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'd like to thank Lloyd for being here last week as I was off to Colorado for a little R&R &R time and continuing ed. And my wife goes to an annual conference at the Broadmoor in Colorado Springs for psych. And so I tag along and suffer along with her for that week there. So. Uh, um, Bring greetings from Colorado, which uh, kind of like Arizona, the cases are going up, you know, like crazy in Colorado. The governor's on TV talking about it, and everybody has their mask off. So I don't know how we equate all of that, but uh, cases continue to rise, and so we continue to have masks here. Uh, we're looking forward to the day when that can go away, but it's still with us uh, now. And actually, we're up to, I think, 17% here in our area, positivity rate, so it's not not going the right direction at the current time. Pleased to have uh, Joyful Noise with us today, providing music. Thank you to 
Brian and everyone for being here, Sue for being our worship leader, and uh, we look forward to hearing their music during the service. Okay, if you would sign the pew registers at this time, we appreciate that. It is stewardship season. Uh, next week is our stewardship Sunday, Pledge Sunday. We, we stopped calling it a pledge and started calling it an estimate of giving, meaning that you know, no one holds you accountable uh, should you give less or should you give more. It's just an estimate of what you might be able to give for the next year, which helps us to create a budget, really, which is what it's all about. So we have these forms we're using. Um, they're on the back there. You're welcome to fill one out and just put it in the envelope, put it in the offering plate. And uh, you'll notice that it's from 2020. Um, we had a lot of these left over and we thought, what a good stewardship thing to do. We, we'll just not waste paper and we'll have this. So just ignore the 2020 and 140 years, but the rest of it is very useful and so we'll do that. And by the way, on the back of your bulletin insert is uh, why we do stewardship. Uh, thank you to Susan, who's here today, for helping us with that. And uh, you'll notice that uh, there's estimates of 2022 giving, and then esti estimates, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's misspelled. Um, so uh, I usually blame that on the computer, but this year I'm going to blame it on COVID uh, <laughs> for making that happen. So just ignore that and uh, read the rest of it. We do have assisted, li uh, assisted living assisted listening devices available uh, today, and thanks to Al for getting that going again. If uh, people are not able to hear, we do have those in the back, so please take advantage of that if you wish. We do continue with our Zoom Bible study every Saturday, although we're transitioning to making that a faith forum starting November 26th. Uh, faith forum gives us the opportunity to, to expand into what we cover, what we do, and so if you have op uh, options on what you might want to see covered, just let me know. Uh, we have book study opportunity and small group opportunities continuing, thanks to uh, those who are providing those for us and take advantage of those. Nominations for 2022 are continuing, and Melissa's doing some great work there, and we're getting a lot of uh, those filled up. So please see her after the service if you would help us. And we have the welcoming reading announcement as well. Those were the announcements I wanted to share today. Let us stand and greet one another with the peace of Christ.
the opening prayer. Majestic and holy God, in reverent awe, we pause to be still and to experience and know your presence with us now, as in this holy silence that surrounds us, we open ourselves up to you in worship. Creating God, we open our eyes to see you in the people around us and to the world in which we live. Open our ears to hear your words of truth spoken to us. <coughs> open our mouths to truly sing your praises and to celebrate your goodness to all humanity. Open our hands that we may give generously to people in need. Guide our feet that we may walk in your ways. Open our minds to learn new concepts and new realities of our God. And open our hearts, our very souls, to the yearning love that you have for each one of us at this moment of awed worship and reverence. May we reach out to receive your gracious and generous mercy, and may we truly worship and serve you today. Amen. Please stand as you were able to sing hymn number 22. We will be singing the first and last verses. God, we come before you to worship, to praise, and to thank you for your generous and gracious acceptance of our worship, imperfect as it is. We confess that we are so obsessed with our own small issues and concerns that we are unable to offer you all that we are in worship of you. Jesus taught his followers to love and worship God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And we confess that we only offer to God parts of our heart and soul, and that we seldom offer very much of our mind to God. Forgive us for our lack of true commitment to the worship of God and the way we limit ourselves in our acts of worship. Forgive us for the way we are often critical of other people's offerings of worship of God because their thoughts and prayers do not suit our preferences, regardless of the genuine way they make their offerings to God. God of the poor and dispossessed, forgive us for our lack of commitment 
to the nurturing of our neighbors in their varying circumstances. Forgiving God, we join with the fellowship of forgiven people to sing a new song to the Lord, for he has done wonderful deeds. We give thanks that our liberating God has forgiven us and remembered his promise to love and be faithful to God's committed people. May we celebrate and break out in praise and sing for joy. Amen. A reading from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. And now a short meditation on Psalm 98, which is given to us by Professor Walter Brueggemann and William H. Bellinger, Jr., from one of the books that they wrote. Some communities exhibit considerable substance in their worship, but little joy or enthusiasm in the praise of God. Others show great enthusiasm, but little substance. This psalm, Psalm 98, expresses powerful reasons for praising God, Israel's historic memory and God's coming to bring justice. The psalm weds the emotion and the intellect, both of which are vital to the praise of God. The psalm includes both the memory of God's mighty acts on behalf of the community and the reminder that these mighty acts have implications for all creation. Psalm 98 suggests that the journey inward and the journey outward are both essential to the full worship of the divine king. Jesus' teaching on this subject finds the great balance. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. And now let us join together as we stand in the singing of For the Beauty of the Earth, number 28.
please be seated. You know, the Christian calendar doesn't work quite like the nation's calendar. We are coming to the end of the Christian church year, and that will be next Sunday, which is Christ the King Sunday. It used to be called the Reign of Christ Sunday in these days. And so it makes sense that our Christian year should end with a vision of the universal Christ. And then after that, we go to the birth of Jesus during the season of Advent and work our way through Christmas and onward in the Christian year. I mention all of that to say that on this Sunday every year, typically our gospel lesson is about the coming of the end of the world and predictions about when that might happen. And today's lesson was in Mark 13, and the disciples asked Jesus, what are going to be the signs of your coming? And he gives them the earthquakes and all of that sort of thing. And so um, I've preached on that quite a lot in 30 years. And so I looked at it and I thought, well, I think I'm going to go another direction today. Um, I haven't heard much lately about the rapture. Uh, anybody hear much about the rapture anymore? You know, it was a big thing 10, 20 years ago. The Christians were all going to be gone, you know, in the rapture. And if you watch the movies, there was always somebody like me in a robe standing there saying, I don't know what happened to all the rest of those people, but we're still here. Uh, that was kind of a dig at us by the conservatives that we were still going to be here when they were gone. And so I was trained in that thoroughly. I understand it all. I don't believe any of it. But anyway, uh, a lot of people did, and they thought the end was coming. Matter of fact, in the 80s, I thought my end was coming quickly, right? I was told the rapture was about to happen, and I thought, why am I going to college? I don't need to do this. I should quit. <laughs> Thank goodness I didn't listen then, and people, I guess, are kind of not listening as much anymore uh, because it doesn't seem like uh, the end is coming, although it could come any day, right? Uh, our own personal end could come every day, any day. And so uh, my favorite illustration that I always use that kind of just makes it sound like we just need to get on with life is this. Uh, a Congress was gathering in the 1700s in New England, and there was a vicious storm outside, and one of the people, uh, one of the guys at that time got up and said, I move that we adjourn, that we might get home because the end is coming. And another person got up and said, uh, Mr. Moderator, whether the end is coming now or not, I do not know. Whether it is or whether it isn't, I want to be found doing my duty. Let us continue. And so that was the, <laughs> the essence of that. And so whether the end comes or not, we're doing our duty, and here we are. But Psalm 98, I think, is a wonderful psalm for this day because it does talk about the end of the world. If you notice at the very end, God is coming to judge the world in righteousness and with equity. And maybe that's the one part of this end of the world uh, kind of prophecy language that we still like, some of us anyway, the fact that God is coming at some point to set things right, uh, to bring this world to judgment and to equity for all and righteousness. Notice in the psalm that this is not about individual you know, judgment on ourselves as if some are going up and some are going down. And that's you know, so what we usually think of with God's judgment. This is God's judgment on all creation. If you read the psalm carefully, it begins with a focus on Israel and praising God for what God has done for Israel. And then it moves to the whole world. Praise God, all you world, for what God has done for you. And then, notice it gets into the created order. The sea, clap your hands. The nations and the oceans, everybody, join together in the praise of God, for God is coming to bring equity and justice to all. This happens several times in the Psalms, that the created order is lifted up as if it too is praising God. Matter of fact, when you leave today, I hope you have a whole new perspective on creation, that when you pass a tree, it is praising God because it's doing that which God created it to do. Now, some trees are moaning, right? <laughs> 
Apostle Paul talks about how creation is groaning until its final redemption. And so when you pass by Lake Mead, it is groaning today, right? Groaning for what has happened to it. And so if you begin to personify all of these things, I think it gets us to a place where we care more about creation. As a matter of fact, we often think of creation as nature, right? Some have pointed out that we call it nature so that we can be the lords of it and we can do whatever we want on it because it's for us. It's not for anybody else. Nature exists for me. And that's the way many people think about it. But if we move to this logic of the Psalms and other portions of the Bible that talk about God's care of all of creation, that all of creation praises God, then we begin to think that we are just part of the creation. We're not the managers of it. We don't have total control over it and can do whatever we want to it. It is a gift of God to all the creation. And so I'm part of that, but so is creation. So is the tree. So is the animal. So is the ground. So is everything that is on the earth is praising God. What a difference that would make. One theologian pointed out rightly, I think, that the abuse of the environment is the latest notion of idolatry. Maybe one of the most manifest notions of idolatry today is our abuse of the environment. Because we don't think God owns it. We don't think God uh, is part of it. We, we control it. We own it. We do what we want to it. And so the psalm suggests that all of creation is praising God. That's not the only place we see it. We were just in the book of Job weeks and weeks ago. Do you remember when Job, all he wanted the whole book was for God to come and tell him why he was suffering? And so God finally shows up in chapter 38, only 42 chapters in the book, and God gives him a several chapter lecture on creation and on God's created order. God seems to delight in it. He wants to show him this animal and this creation that he did. And it's almost as if to say to Job, you know, I, I created all of this. You're part of it, yes, but it's much more vast than you. And I celebrate all of it. And of course, the answer didn't really uh, help Job very much other than the fact that he realized his place and he had to say, I'm, I'm not the creator, you are. Uh, but even that shows God's care of creation, God's rejoicing in creation. And the psalm suggests that as well, that, that everything is praising God. We gather to praise God. The nature is praising God as well, or groaning, whatever the case might be. Praise is sort of an uh, uh, antiquated kind of thing these days. Uh, you don't hear the word praise very much, except to praise an individual, perhaps. Uh, but the praise of God is why we gather here every week. And it's a subversive act. What do I mean by that? It, it subverts the culture which would not have the same praise of God for God's creation and God's gifts to us and what God is doing for us. We gather every week to sing and to praise, and it's subversive. On your way here today, you had to pass a lot of houses, one out of every 20, <laughs> one out of every 40, uh, got up and went somewhere to praise God today. And so it's a subversive act, and, and others looking at it would say, I don't need that, it's, it's kind of pointless. Uh, what do I get out, you know, I'm not, I don't have to do that. Uh, but it's the praise of God that opens us up to the reality that God is the one who is the creator, who is the sustainer, who's the redeemer, who's the one with us. And it is this praise that is what we do. And it lifts us out of our selfishness to a greater cause, a greater community, a, a greater future. Now, you may be here today and you think, uh, well, I don't, have, I don't feel much like praising now. <laughs> We're all kind of there with you with COVID and other personal things that might be going on in your life. And, and so sometimes it's hard to praise. But here's where I think the Israelites really help us, or the Psalms, or 
the uh, Hebrew Bible. They had a wonderful way of praising God as a hopeful thing. And since we're almost to Christmas, I would just lift up to you Mary and her Magnificat, if you know it at all. In the midst of her praising God, she says God is going to bring down the mighty and lift up the lowly. And she's doing this as a peasant woman who has no place in her culture, uh, no future hope of you know, rising above her station. But she sings this. And you'll find this throughout the Hebrew Scriptures that they praise in anticipation. It's almost like a hopeful dream that they have that sustains them, that helps them to get through what they're going through. And so praise can even be a future-oriented thing that enables us to make it through the present. And so I submit to you, Mary and her Magnificat, as Christmas is coming, go read it. And imagine her singing that when she has no business singing it. Uh, as Walter Brueggemann says, this is the impossible possibilities that they saw in what God might be able to do. Uh, and so that might help us to praise as well. Well, as you know, the climate summit just finished. And it's a good day for us to talk about creation, to, to reorient in our thinking on perhaps how we view it. Uh, and you know that they squabbled and squabbled, and I, I love it that the young people were there protesting. The young people said, you know, you keep talking, 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 you won't ever do anything. And sure enough, they talked a lot, and they did do some stuff, uh, but there's still a lot of pushback with the fossil fuels and other things. And so as we sit here today, you know, what, what is our task? How can we possibly be part of this massive creation, climate change kind of discussion. We can't go over to India, for instance, and try to get them to change how they view fossil fuels, and we can't deal with China. And so I found this week a wonderful uh, description given by a theologian where he said, you know, yes, there are vast problems, but maybe the best thing we can do is nibble on the edge over here and do our little part. We can't take care of the big, huge problem, but we can nibble at it with our own individual decisions. And for that, they talked about the, all the R's, you know, uh, recycling, reusing, uh, refurbishing. Uh, what are the others? Uh, uh, gosh, uh, reclaiming. All the R's you can think of, the individual things that you can do to make your little small change in the vast system. One of the other things we can do is our denomination has put together a creation justice church opportunity. We can become a creation justice church and there's steps for getting there. All we need is a small group of people who would be willing to take part in this and take it up. And so um, I'm going to leave this right here. <laughs> if anyone, uh, this is sort of like an altar call. If anyone feels so led after the service to come forward and help us to make this happen, that, that would be a, a small nibble on the part of our church uh, to deal with this vast climate change issue. Religious leaders got together uh, some time ago and came up with this saying, they said, we've been given a garden by God. Let's not turn it into a desert. And that kind of speaks at God's creative purpose, God's creation, not ours, and that it is our responsibility to pass it on as still a garden, not a desert. And so this morning, we praise God. Creation praises God. As you leave here today, hopefully you'll always look at stuff now with, oh, there's a flower praising God, isn't that beautiful? Or there's a tree praising God. Or, sadly, there's a lake groaning to its creator for how it's been treated. Uh, God, may God help us to take that with us and to apply it and to nibble on the edges of these great problems. Amen.
Thank you for that. We come to our morning prayer time and a chance for you to all share with God the requests that you bring on your hearts today. Perhaps today uh, we should add uh, those things that we are praising God about. We were talking in the Bible study about how difficult a time it is in this COVID time to to not see just all the negativity and the negative stuff, but uh, if we take a larger picture of last year, just wondering if we'd get a vaccine, and here we are, and how far we've come, and a lot to be praising God for in the scientific realm of what they were able to do. And so uh, maybe a chance for us to share the praises that we bring today as well. Uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Loving God, we do praise you today for you, who you are, for your creation, for your creation of us, for your creation of this planet on which we live, for all the beauty that we see, all the things that you created that are so uh, majestic and so unusual at the same time in some of the, uh, the plants and the species that we see before us each day. Uh, and so we do celebrate you as the creator and we share with creation a praise of you for your power and might and love. And help us today to praise you for those things that we bring with us today that are uh, special, that are positive, that have been uh, parts of our lives that we celebrate even in this time in which we live. We are grateful for the blessings of life that we enjoy and while we are grateful, we pray for those who are uh, suffering, uh, who, because of uh, the way things are structured in our society, in our world, uh, so many are left behind, including in climate, where the rich nations uh, are causing damage to the, the needy nations, and uh, there's a lot of talk about how to, to fix that. And so, it continues seemingly all the time that there are people that are left behind, that are not treated right. And so we pray for justice. We pray along with creation for your equity to come. We lift up to you the unspoken requests that we bring today, and you know each one. Uh, you know the things that we lament, the things that we are disturbed by as well as the things that we praise you for. And so we lift it all up to you collectively and pray that you would give us insight and direction as we're able and that we would perhaps find ways to nibble on the edges of all of these things in our own lives. We pray all of this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For our stewardship minute today, I've asked Diane to come and uh, share with us, and we appreciate her willingness to do that today. All right. I wanted to share what stewardship meant to me um, because this church has helped me in so many ways. Um, and one of them I wanted to share was just maybe about three years ago when I was a single mom, four kids, and then I was injured and I couldn't work. The church helped me out with some of my bills, and I just can't thank them enough for that. Um, but in every day that I come here, I wouldn't be able to come if it wasn't for you guys' donations, because downstairs, the teachers downstairs, they're not free. <laughs> it costs money for those teachers. And if they weren't here able to take my kids, I wouldn't be able to come to church. So I thank you all for your donations, that you donate to the church even a little bit so that I can even come to church. It means so much to me. And I hope that everyone is able to still give as they can um, and that I can continue to keep coming to church. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. I still remember that first day when we met here years and years ago. Uh, Diane was looking for a, 
a church family, and I'm glad you found us and we found you. So thank you for being part of this church family and for the ministry to the children that you provide. We, uh, those of us who have been here a while, uh, remember the children that were with you years ago, and we, you know, we uh, grieve that we no longer see them, but you provide a great service that uh, I'm, we grieve. You grieve a lot more than we do. <laughs> so uh, a wonderful ministry that you have, and, and so we appreciate it so much. We come to our offering now. Um, Next week, we'll hear from the foundation. Uh, the foundation has uh, legacy gifts that they receive that help us continue into the future, and we'll also hear from our moderators, and so we'll look forward to that for next week. But uh, today, we receive our offerings. We're grateful for our online audience and what you provide, and our in-person audience. Needless to say, these are challenging times, and all of us are scaling back as much as we can in all churches. And I was just in Colorado last week and went to a, a United Church of Christ church, and on the back of the bulletin was that ominous message, we are behind in our budget. <laughs> so <laughs> it uh, is certainly all over the place, and uh, we're doing what we can to cut back and survive. So thank you for helping us. And in, in this unusual time still, we have our offering plates back here, and we receive donations in person there and online of course you can always click our button on the website or send in uh, a donation to us at the church office and now let us have our prayer of dedication we give in grateful thanksgiving for all that God has given us in the upside down world of the gospel we measure our wealth not by what we have, but by what we can give away. Let us give away generously in this offering to bless your church, your people, your creation. Amen. Amen. Now our final hymn is When in Our Music God is Glorified, number 561. Let us stand together as we sing.
When in our music God is glorified and adoration leaves no room for pride, it is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. That kind of sums it up that we are one with creation as we're praising God, so is creation. Thank you for being here. We do have communion down front. Thanks to Tom. If you'd like to receive it, we meet next door in Perkins Hall for fellowship. And again, uh, as you go today, go thinking about creation praising God. Do you ever talk to your plants? <laughs> we used to play Mozart, you know, that was supposed to help them grow. But uh, apparently they're listening. So, uh, you know, praise along with your plants and creation. And go with the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.